Hi, I'm Aaron of Living Science Videos. I thought I was done talking about pea plants in the last two videos about genetics and heredity patterns, honestly. But it's difficult to talk about heredity patterns without mentioning Gregor Mendel's groundbreaking work using pea plants. Pea plants have simple inheritance patterns that can be easily predicted, so they were ideal for Mendel's work. So let's have one more look at the humble plant that helped change the way the world thought about inheritance. Look, for example, at this diagram. Mendel's, wait for it, pea plants have two outcomes for color, yellow and green. The alleles for the color in the diagram are noted with the first letter of the dominant color, uppercase Y for yellow and lowercase Y for recessive green. Of the possible genotypes when you hybridize completely homozygous YY yellow and YY green in the parent generation, in the first familial or F1 generation get the phenotype for 100% yellow peas. Even the offspring with the little Y allele in their genotype still are yellow because the big Y yellow allele dominates the little Y recessive allele. But look what Mendel found in the F2 generation. There was a 25% chance of a green pea offspring because two yellow peas with a genotype YY can give their offspring two little Y or green alleles and no big Y yellow alleles. And just like that, you've got a green pea. Although that phenotype is still not as common as the yellow phenotype. However, life is not so simple as two alleles for a trait in every case. So we finally bid adieu to the humble pea plant it is actually not an exaggeration to say that most traits in humans have multiple alleles because of the complexity of DNA, which we'll get into in the next video. We talked about one trait in the last video that is located on just one gene, but actually has more than two alleles for the same trait, blood type. Mom in this diagram looks kind of like a ballerina and I'm not even commenting on why the dad is lacking feet, but moving on. The point is that blood type would not have been as simple to predict with Mendelian inheritance. First of all, these two parents both have dominant alleles. A and B are both dominant, and as we expressed in the last video, the offspring will inherit both dominant alleles equally as the AB blood type. They are what they call codominant. But blood type is even more complicated than that because it also has a third recessive allele, the O allele. You may have to check that on a Punnett square later. Moving along. As we said earlier, blood type is determined by just one gene, but again, genetics is more complicated than that. Although Mendel studied more simple traits, even he noticed that genetics are not that simple. It seems we said goodbye to pea plants just a smidgen too early. Mendel noticed that pea plants with white flowers had white seed coats, and that was different from other flower colors. He inferred, correctly, that one gene can have an effect on more than one trait. This is called pleiotropy. Now I really think this will be the last time I say pea plant in a video because we're getting even more complicated. Let's have a look at traits that don't just have multiple alleles, they have multiple genes. These traits are called polygenic. As you can see from this diagram, human skin color is controlled by more than one gene, and also this diagram. The same is true for hair color. A lot of people think that the genes for red hair are just a simple recessive trait, and of course it's not that simple. Before we move on, let's set another thing straight about red hair. Red hair is even more complex than the pleiotropic gene that controls more than one trait for albinism, for example. There are at least two genes that control human hair color. A lot of people already get that brown hair dominates over the recessive blonde, but where does red hair come from? There is a separate gene that modifies the brown blonde hair gene. They call these types of genes modifier genes. The red hair color gene modifies the brown slash blonde color gene in a process called epistasis. A human has to have two recessive copies of the red hair gene to have red hair. What kind of red hair depends on whether the allele modified is brown or blonde. Let's talk about one more pattern of heredity. Your alleles are located on your genes, and those are on different locations on your chromosomes. Just like your alleles for blood type are located on chromosome pair number 9, you have some traits located on your sex chromosome that also determine sex. Two X's make an offspring female, and an X from a female gamete and a Y from a male gamete make, the, make a male gamete. But since some traits are also on your sex chromosomes, you can find some phenotypes that disproportionately affect one sex over the other, like red slash green color blindness. What's interesting is that even though color blindness is located on the X chromosome from the mother, that males are more likely to have red green color blindness. As you can see, the red-green colorblindness gene is recessive, so female gametes need two copies of the gene to be colorblind, whereas males don't have a second X chromosome, they only have a Y. 
So having just one X chromosome with a recessive allele can cause red-green color blindness in male gametes. Now let's look at abnormal heredity patterns, chimeras. In fiction, you often see, like particularly with mythology, you'll see that people made up animals by sticking together animals that really existed, like the griffin is, you know, half eagle and half lion, and, you know, dragons get traits from mammals and reptiles kind of thrown in together. That's what chimeras are in mythology. Here to talk about real-life chimeras is Micro-Raw. In genetics, chimeras are two twins that fuse into one before birth. This can create some weird results. In humans, chimeras have only been discovered by a chance about a hundred times, like the man who discovered that his child's blood type didn't match either his or the mother's blood type. At first, the family thought that since the child was conceived through an in vitro fertilization, that the laboratory had used another person's sperm by accident. The reality was much weirder. He had absorbed his twin in the womb, and it resulted in a different blood type. There was also a woman who needed a kidney transplant, whom Genetic testing revealed that she wasn't the mother of the daughter she gave birth to. Was it aliens? Nope. She was a human chimera of an unknown twin. Maybe you've seen Venus, the chimera cow on the internet. She looks like a chimera, but she's actually a mosaic. Her divided fur pattern is a sex-linked trait like the one we talked about earlier. This cat is a mixture of her mother's X chromosome and her father's mother's X chromosome. Human females are mosaics too, but their stripes, as science YouTuber Veritasium calls them, are invisible. In other cases of chimerism, dinosaurs like budgies can even be two different sexes on different sides. Budgies like Houdini, in the video next to me, are different sexes on different sides of the bird. You see, males and females of this species of budgie have different colors, and Houdini has both of them. That literally means that Houdini is half male and half female. Chimerism is weird.